Hello there. Welcome to my campfire. My name is Seraphine, the Midnight Bard, and I travel from place to place, seeking the strange, the bizarre, and the unexplained. The modern world is mostly safe from the paranormal. Thousands upon millions of people can go their entire lives without ever needing to fear the wrath of unseen forces. By and large, the paranormal is bound to certain locations or circumstances, and it takes the right combinations of chance and bad luck for anyone to fall prey to these things beyond the veil. The simple truth is that, for the average person, the likelihood that they will find themselves the victims of anything but a normal life is rather small. <laughs> small, but never zero. Tonight, we will hear two tales of normal lives that suddenly took a turn for the strange. Join me as we hear Zombie Cage and my son has a really vivid imagination. That sexy Irish bastard locked me in a room full of zombies. Talk about having shit taste in men, am I right, ladies? I should have known he was a serial killer. A well-adjusted, good-looking guy who used soap, had all his own teeth, and was actually interested in me? Of course it was too good to be fucking true. So here was the rub. I was trapped in a cramped room with eight zombies. Four male, three female, one to decompose to tell. And it was gonna be a long time before anybody came looking for me. Oh sure, I'd told my friends and families where I was going. But since the outbreak, the police had been overwhelmed. Although we'd clawed back some semblance of a functional society, a missing person case would be low on their priorities list. Containing the outbreak was a huge resource drain, which meant the majority of cities got a little... Mad Maxi. Serial killers popped up all over the place. Psychiatrists even had an explanation for the phenomena. Something about a trauma response to the end of the world? And now I'd gone home with one of the lunatics. Fan-fucking-tastic. This was marginally worse than my dinner date with Jerry. Luckily, as everyone knows, zombies are a massively shit way to kill someone. Oh sure, in the early days they were a threat, but now they had rigor mortis and crumbling limbs and the hand-eye coordination of a baby swallow. I estimated the room to be roughly 20 square feet. It would probably take the zombies an hour to make it from one end to the other, but I guess that was part of the appeal, right? My death would be an agonizing, drawn-out affair. From behind a thick sheet of glass, my tormentor could watch my gradual descent into madness. I lay down in the corner and rested my eyes. When I opened them again, the zombies were halfway towards me. I stared at the ceiling until they were almost close enough to take a bite, then sidestepped them, steering well clear of their mouths, which snapped open and shut. Then I curled up against the opposite wall. It wouldn't be too difficult to stay alive. Eventually, somebody would come find me, and for a moment, I let myself believe things would be okay. But then, my captor appeared behind the glass and tapped a button in the wall. His voice came out of a speaker in the ceiling. Congrats! You've survived a full hour! I'm impressed! Only an hour? I replied. Shit, I could do this all day. He smiled. Really? Really? I dusted my shoulder. It's a walk in the park. He grinned. Well, in that case, let's up the ante. He pressed a button, and then an alarm blared. A moment later, the walls began to tremble. Then, they slid inward. Now the room wasn't 20 by 20. It, it was 19 by 19. My captor smiled. <laughs> See you in another hour. Hello there, friends. Before we continue on to the next story, be sure to strike the like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and be sure to stop by the comments section and tell me how many zombies you think you could take in a fight. I don't personally know how many I could take on, but you'd better believe I'm going for the world record. Thanks for stopping by. Now on to the next story.
I have a four-year-old son called Mark, who is one of the happiest children I have ever met in my life. He always has a huge smile on his face, and everyone he meets instantly takes a liking to him. Mark is friends with all of the neighboring children, and our house is usually filled with laughter and the sound of children's voices. He is always coming up with new games to keep all of his friends amused. His friends are usually amazed at the games he comes up with, and are overjoyed at how much fun they have playing with him. Most of the neighboring parents are always commenting on how Mark is one of the most amazing children they have met. They cannot believe how often he comes up with ideas for new games or how much effort he puts into them. This morning, he woke up and wanted to go outside and play, but I wouldn't let him as there was thunder and lightning forecast for the day. He just shrugged and ran off to find something to play. I was sitting on the couch with my husband watching TV and I could see Mark jumping from one piece of furniture to the next. I thought nothing of it when he fell onto the floor as it was only a small distance. I almost jumped out of my skin when his scream of anguish started. We both jumped out of our chairs and ran to see if he was okay. I stood there in shock while staring down at his body. There was steam rising from him and his entire body had become blackened and burnt. Mark just lay there screaming in agony and my husband tried to lift him but he quickly moved his hands away with scorch marks on his arms. Mark just gazed at us with pain in his eyes and muttered, the floor is lava, before releasing one last agonized breath. Thank you for tuning in to this week's story, Campfire Gang. Please remember to strike the like and sub buttons, and check out the author's links in the description below. If you like my content and would like to help support the channel, you can check out my Patreon, like these fireside friends. Also, your friend the Bard is now a published audiobook narrator. Follow the link in the description to get a copy of my first audiobook project. It's a great story, and it helps support the channel. Take care, friends. I look forward to meeting you again by the light of the campfire.